There comes a time in every YouTuber's journey, desperate for views and algorithmic attention, that we decide to take advantage of the human emotion and we make controversial content, a technique used by the most influential and puzzled looking culprit. What are you doing? What? I'm just being weird. Oh, okay. Well, I'm leaving the light on. Get out of my business. Jeez. Oh, hey, I'm Danny. I'm warning you right now. If you watch this channel or you know me in real life, you'll know I'm energetic, pretty positive, but generally a pretty cool guy. I'm not here to make enemies, especially not of manufacturers of effects pedals that I know and love. These people work very hard on their products. I'm friends with tons of them. This video is what we call in the business a gentle ribbing. Even though I'm gonna show specific examples, almost every manufacturer is guilty of one of these and by no means let this be a deal breaker for you. Music is not perfect, so neither should the gear. So let's have some fun and talk about the five worst pedal trends Please be gentle on me. So mini pedals are pretty common now, huh? These little guys? Great, right? You're wrong. When is small going to be small enough, huh? I could smash two to three of these at the same time. And I do. I'm clumsy. And the space saving is minimal. Look at the difference between these two guys. There's not really that big of a space difference. And you do sacrifice the durability on some of these pedals. A lot of times manufacturers have to go to these really small little pots that are very easily broken to make them fit in the very small enclosures to make you all happy. Now the good news is a lot of manufacturers are swinging the other way and they're using larger custom enclosures that are made specifically for that brand. That's cool. But hey, watch it you guys. Not so big, we still wanna be able to fit a lot of pedals on our pedal board. We don't wanna have another one of these on our hands, all right? Science is fun. So a trim pot is a little knob inside of your pedal. It's meant to be something that you adjust yourself. You take the back off and you adjust it with a little flathead screwdriver generally. A dip switch is basically the same idea, but a switch instead of a pot you twist. This is a way that manufacturers can add features to things, but not muck up the aesthetics of the front. A lot of times trim pots and dip switches are functions that are not super necessary, but sometimes, and here's my bugaboo, a lot of times these functions are pretty essential. That's a very frustrating, UI decision. A great example of that is one of my favorite pedals of all time, the Cattle and Bread Dirty Little Secret. This is a double whammy, as they say. It has not only a trim pot inside the pedal that adjusts the presence, which in my opinion, presence is one of the most important pedal knobs you can have when it comes to distortion because every amp is different and sometimes you just need to take away that really buzzy high end that a lot of people don't like. This function was actually so important to me on the cattle and bread, I actually rewired and put a proper pot on the side of the pedal. It's a little ugly, but hey, what are we gonna do? We need this presence control on the outside. And the double whammy is, is that they actually have a switch that switches between super bass mode and super lead mode. That is awesome. They have it on the inside of the pedal too. So I actually cut with a Dremel a notch so I could stick a little screwdriver in and adjust that setting. The things we do for tone. And now the unintended consequence of putting dip switches and trim pots inside of pedals is that it trains the public to expect that if there's a trim pot inside the pedal, you can adjust it yourself. And that's not correct. A lot of pedals have trim pots inside of them that adjust the bias of a transistor or the timing of a delay chip. Those are stuff that are set at the factory and you're not supposed to change. I had a customer once that brought in an amplifier and he had blown up the tubes in his amp and I looked at the back and the bias pot on the back of the amplifier was absolutely crank. And he's like, yeah, every time I turn that knob all the way up, it sounds sick. Don't do that. So I ask you, the consumer, is that lazy design? Are you willing to buy a product that's perhaps more complicated on the front face so that you don't have to dive in and have to get a science coat on to adjust the trim pots and the dip switches? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Night, night.
good, that was good. Oh, this one's gonna sting. Unlabeled functions or artsy fun names that don't mean anything. Just a sec. This is awkward. It's taking so long. Oh, I'm getting tired just standing like this. Okay, so I've used the El Capistan. Oh my God. It was my main delay pedal since like these came out. I think these came out in like 2008. I still don't know what the secondary functions of this pedal are. I'm sorry. I just, that's information that does not stick into my brain. It's got a reverb? Now, I've come to terms with it that most of the secondary functions, you know, the ones that you hold and press and twist, they're not really functions that I need. So on the off chance that I need to use them or want to use them, I can Google the manual. But Googling the manual is something that nobody wants to do, especially a know-it-all like me. How to become a famous YouTuber. Now let's check this out. Ah! So unlabeled functions are a pedal trend that I cannot get behind. There are some pedals out there that don't even have their functions labeled. But, oh my gosh, how do I navigate those waters? Jeez Louise. Some of these pedals don't even have names that refer to tones or functions that are normal on a pedal, like this. But, turn up the but. <sighs> oh, I fell asleep there. If you really look back at it, we've had a pretty crazy run of effects pedals over the years. Best part is manufacturers are always trying new things and no one buys them because musicians are dummies. But we gotta push past that, guys. We've had enough of the clones. We need to embrace the crazy stuff, the new stuff. And there's some good news on that front. One of the great trends that I'm seeing now is people are not analog or die. I remember when I first started collecting guitar pedals and such, if it was digital, it was poo-pooed. It was poo-pooed. It was And now that people are okay with digital pedals, that really unlocks a lot of creativity for designers. So let's get weird. You know, Chase Bliss. Chase Bliss is a great example. I love buying these pedals because I don't know how to work them. And that is really, really exciting to me. I love buying something I don't know how to use. That's amazing. That's such a great feeling. It leads to experimentation and it leads to new genres of music. And that's the kind of stuff we need as a pedal community to not be boring. Another great guy who inspires me all the time, Dr. Scientist. Wow, Ryan, I love you. So the worst trend of them all is being boring. We want to push past that. We don't want the same old, same old. We want the new, new, the new, 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 new. Like this Game Changer pedal. Yeah, their, their name's a little on the nose, but this blinky light, woo! So there you go. Do you agree, disagree with any of that stuff? I hope I wasn't too harsh on anybody. The thing I love about this stuff is music is not meant to be perfect, so neither should the gear. If it was perfect right off the get-go with those big honking boxes from the 60s, there wouldn't have been like iterations of all these different pedals over the years and innovations and stuff like that. So we have to be really thankful that they didn't nail it the first time, like the frickin' Stratocaster or the Telecaster. What business did Leo Fender have to just nail those guitars off the get-go? It's just like the weirdest, cockiest thing. So I hope this was fun. If you disagree with any of that stuff, let me know below here, you know, below. And if you if you agreed with some of the stuff, hit that little thummy uppy thing. That's cool, huh? Thumbs. It's one of those things that if you're not able to zoom out and look at yourself from the broad scope of humanity, you're not gonna grow, you're not gonna learn. So I hope this was fun for you, a little gentle ribbing. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.